my story isn't special. That is one of the most common myths I hear when it comes about book writing and publishing. When I speak to healers and authors and coaches, they often feel that their story isn't special. Like who would want to hear from them? Their life has just been a normal life. And that, my friends, is an absolute myth. It just means that you haven't dug deep enough into your own story, that you haven't asked for enough reflections from the outside world to truly understand and claim your unique essence. My name is Crystal Hill. I am the CEO of Hill House Publishing, where it is our mission to help coaches and healers, way showers, visionaries, to write their transformational business books so that we can raise the consciousness on the planet, one person, one story, and one book at a time. We have numerous different ways in which you can get involved in writing your book and getting it published. And so today I really want to talk about this, this, this one, this big myth. What if you feel that your story isn't special? What if you haven't had the big traumas? What if your hero, your, you know, your pain to purpose journey isn't what you see it in other people? And so I invite you today. So there's three steps that we can do, look at to overcome this. The first one is that we need to start looking through the lens of other people. Look at your life through the story, um, through the lens of another person who may have had a completely different upbringing, a completely different set of beliefs. So, for example, I have lived in four countries. I have, you know, I'm intimately familiar with the different cultures, and that is normal to me. It just is. That's just what my life was. Doesn't everybody do that? <laughs> But for somebody who has never left their hometown, it's just crazily um, out of this world and potentially unbelievable and different. So think about it this way. You move into a new house and you absolutely love the view out of your front, you know, out of your out of the window. You look at it, there's mountains, it's beautiful, there's incredible trees, you see the most amazing sunrise every morning. And after a couple of months, you just take it for granted. You don't even notice it anymore. It's just normal. And then a friend comes to visit you and they're amazed and they're like, oh my God, this view is amazing. I love this view. You. you are so, so lucky. And you're like, huh, am I? Oh, yeah, I'd forgotten about that. And that's a typical sentence I hear a lot. Oh, yeah, I'd forgotten about that. Oh, yeah, I didn't realize that that was something special. So look at your life through the lens of somebody else. And the way you can do that, and it's a you know marketing exercise that is or branding exercise that is very well known, is ask your clients, ask your best friends, what are the qualities that they most value about you. For example, with your clients, why did they choose you over another coach, over another healer, over another practitioner? And for me, the feedback I have gotten is that I have this ability to give feedback, constructive feedback about chapters. Sometimes that's quite harsh. You know, it's like, no, this is, this is not how it needs to be. Um, you need to do this instead. And so, but, but the feedback I get is that people are really scared to get feedback about their writing because it's so precious to them. And then when they get my feedback, they say, oh my God, I felt just so, so seen and so held. And you did it with such grace and gentleness that I just feel really, really safe. So it's an ability that I have to help build people up, make them feel seen and make them feel safe rather than be the English teacher that says, well, this one was wrong and the grammar here is right. And why couldn't you remember that 
you're, you're missing a step here and the reader won't be able to follow you if you're leaving this important detail out. You know, there, so there's a way to give feedback and it is something that I've trained in, but it's also something that is innately natural to me because just because of who I am. And so you will have your own unique reasons why people come to you, the things that make you special, your unique signature. So that is step one. I have my notes down here, so I keep looking down there. Um, step two is that you only need to be a couple of steps ahead of the person that you're trying to help, the person, <clears throat> excuse me, the person that you're trying to inspire, the person that you're looking to educate with the book that you write. You know, there was, I was working with a retirement coach and she was still in her corporate role, unrelated, and she was looking to transition into becoming a retirement coach. She was very passionate about this. And we looked at her story as to why she became so passionate about this and why it was so important to her to become a retirement coach. And it was because her father went into depression when he retired. And so now she was approaching retirement and didn't want this to happen to her. And so she's almost um preempting this for her own self creating something of meaning something of purpose beyond her retirement and in doing so also then going to help others to do so because we often teach what we need to learn and so there's another really important exercise that i do with my clients before we go into any work and it's based on the principle that i have come across um, from dr john d martini who was interviewed in the secret and he says that our voids create our values. That which we perceive as absent in our childhood is that which we strive for, which we're moving towards our whole life. And so if you're looking at your history, at your story through this very simple lens of a pattern of the values that you are that are important to you and that you live your life through, that you're striving towards, that will give you a very clear and very unique way of looking at your personal story. So for me, my void to value statement is from insignificance to significance. And with that, like a secondary one is from disempowerment to empowerment. And there is a story, my origin story, like if I think about my childhood, you know, got myself into an alpha state and I used to, you know, that's what I take my clients through, going into an alpha state and really go looking back at your childhood. What was the, the energy in your childhood? What was it oppressed? Was there something missing? How did you feel? Did you, yeah, was there an absence? And it could be an absence of connection, an absence of love, an absence of um you know, significance, whatever it could be. Like for me, it was this significance is what I made it mean. And so the different events can become different things for people. Um, so for me, the insignificance came from the fact that I had two younger siblings that were very, very close to each other. And my mom was just very busy with them, leaving me very often to my own devices. So I felt like I had to do something in order to be seen, in order to be appreciated, or in order to have my needs met. So I was a lot, very sick as a child in order, you know, there's like this negative attention seeking, um, a lot, very, very sick. And then as an adult, this need to be seen translated into looking for something with this need, I'm going to show them. I need to prove myself. And that created hustle and it created perfectionism and it created burnout. And so then that was my journey to then firstly striving for this from a negative perspective, from the void, to then at some point letting that go, letting that story go, realizing and knowing that I am significant and we all are um, just because we exist right? Our story matters. Our perspective matters just because we are. We have a very, very unique way of looking at the world based on the unique combination of our parents, 
of our beliefs, of our culture, of our physicality, of the friends that we have, the experiences. It makes us so, so, so unique. And bringing awareness to that is is really important. So eventually, with a lot of healing and a lot of um, person development, I finally was able to let go this negative way of trying to achieve significance. And then there was a period where there was a void again. It's like, well, if I don't have to strive to be successful in order to prove something, then why am I doing it? It was a really interesting transition, a really interesting time to then coming into this place where I just am who I am and I'm here to serve. And in doing so, I will, I am gaining significance because I feel like my, I'm valued for what I do. And I wonder if you can relate, you know, because significance is one of the six core needs that Tony Robin talks about. We have the, the need for significance, the need for safety, the need for connection, the need for adventure, and then the need for contribution and growth. So these could be your voids to value. It could be something completely different. When I did this exercise um, with um, some of my clients, suddenly one of them came up with from terror to trust. And you see, again, terror could enter into, you know, could the opposite of terror could be something completely different. But that word is so unique because we really connected deeply into her energy, her essence at home. And she had no idea that that was the whole life journey that she was on. And once we understand that, we can then look at the roadmap. Well, what were the significant roadmarks that got me from terror to trust or from insignificance to significance? And then we have a story that is worth sharing. So looking at ourselves through the lens of somebody else to reflect back to us, knowing that we just need to be one step ahead of um, the people we want to help, is another one, as we as I mentioned. Um, and then the third one is people want real and relatable stories. We no longer are look, looking for stories of gurus, people that we can put on a pedestal. Those times are over. You know, the, I always talk about the, you know, from, astro, from an astrological perspective, moving out of the Piscean age into the Aquarian age means that the old power systems, that, that horizontal kind of way of um, hierarchical way of being is crumbling as we're seeing around the world in every area of life. And so now what's coming in the Aquarian age is more like a circular living where every where the individuals are more valued where everyone's story matters but we still have this thinking from over here that only gurus only people with a large following only their stories matter and my who am i my story doesn't matter so we need to reprogram ourselves and i hope that this um this video will help you to really claim your story because yeah, there's no great, there's nothing that gives me greater joy than helping you to step into your power, to step into claiming who you truly are. And when I do that, I feel like that is very much part of fulfilling my mission um, to help to help, you know, to, to facilitate the embodiment of your expert status, of your full potential. And so this awareness will help you tap into that. It will then give you a confidence that you step into from which you present yourself to the world that is phenomenal. Authenticity is the highest value that we're striving for. We're sick and tired of seeing people who are well polished. We're sick and tired of of, of pretends, of cookie cutter solutions. We are now moving into a time where alignment with self is and therefore an authentic expression of who we are is the most important thing. So your story doesn't have to be complete. You can still be on your journey. Just like my client was, who was about to move from her retirement, from her corporate job into her purpose work, her passion to become a retirement coach. So where are you on your journey? What is your void to value statement? And who can you ask right now to give you some feedback on what makes you unique, your unique combination of gifts that create your energetic blueprint? 
I'll leave you with that and I'll be back with another dismantling of a myth next week. Bye for now.